Investing in black women and young people and brown folks is not a risk. It's not a risk. If you value these folks' lived experiences, you win. The beer flows early in this one. Win what? What, a return on my money? A, a richer experience? What? What, are you just saying that all fucking black people are financial fucking wizards? And if I give a black person $100,000, I will get in return $10 million? The fuck? Is, no matter what, I will win with my investment? That's, that's not possible. That's not what investing is. Investing involves taking a risk. When we take our lived experiences and we line them up with a set of political values, those two things shouldn't diverge or be alien to one another. <laughs> They should actually be about enhancing people's lived experiences, all people's lived experiences, and not just a small group of people. Really, all people, even white, cis, straight, long-haired, bearded, fat, capitalistic white males that will pretty much disagree with everything you have to say in a respectful way. Um, we still welcome at the table? Because I'm willing to bet we're the enemy in your eyes. And so if you look up and you are exercising a politic that is connected to identity that says, only me, only a few of us, then that is an identity politics that won't get us free that won't get us to collective liberation. <laughs> you serious? But if you look up and you realize that your politics are grounded in lived experiences and they're all about more, more people, not just me, everybody, then that gets us to where we need to be. I actually, agree with her my politics are about everyone and where we need to be but it's just where i want everyone to be and where you want everyone to be are two entirely different planets what are the possibilities when we vote in the best interest of working class people of women of queer and trans folks, of people who come from immigrant and migrant families, all the possibilities are there. Yes, the possibilities are there. And that's why when it comes to freedom, most Americans are on the side of freedom. That's why even the most ardent Christian Republican politician has backed off the gay marriage thing because it's popular. Okay, but here's the thing, and I know what you're getting at. Trump's been president for two years, and you've had a Republican Congress for, I think, ten. What rights have been stripped away from you? What rights have been taken from you? The answer is nothing. What protections have been taken away from you? The answer is nothing. You know, there was this big bullshit story about how Louisiana just wanted to have, like, one of the reasons... Uh, they wanted to fire people as well. Uh, Clyde sucks dick, and I just want to fire me a faggot. Well, you know what? Here's the harsh truth of the matter. One, the free market will take care of the dickhead homophobes business. Okay? He'll be out of business if he doesn't want to hire and pay the best people. Two, most jobs are at will employment, meaning you can be fired for any reason at any time. Okay, the uh, that's one of the biggest lies of the, oh my god, I can be fired because I like to suck cock. No, you can be fired just because you showed up three minutes late. So, yeah. I, I'd love to know what protections, and honestly, you live in America, bitch. 
I'd love for you to say this and also be saying it while you're in Iran. And so it's super important that we tell the most complete stories we can tell about what's happening to our people. Your people. Your people. Don't you mean members of the human fucking race? Funny, I, I seem to remember a guy in the 60s, he was assassinated, you know, not a very big deal in uh, American history, you know, one in a day when people would be judged by content of character and not color of their skin, meaning we would all just see each other as one people. But, you know, hell, why praise his legacy? He's just a minor footnote. Because if we tell incomplete stories about the conditions of our communities, incomplete stories about policing, incomplete stories about elections, then we're going to have incomplete solutions to actually addressing those issues. Look, I'm not even going to do the politics thing. That's just fucking retarded. However, uh, the reason your communities look the way you do is not lack of funds. It's just because people around there don't give a shit. And quite frankly, they would go back to shit if they were cleaned up for free. Quite frankly, this is the problem with the welfare state. However, getting on to your things of police brutality. Okay, I am all for prosecuting police officers that do a bad shoot or commit outright murder. However, good shoot, bad shoot, outright murder, whatever the fuck you want to call it, would you like to know how many people, black people, were killed by police officers in 2017? I would use 2018, but this year has not come to a close. It was 250. Would you like to know how many black men were killed by other black men? Now, this is police officers of all races, of all walks of life, and all genders. And this is all black people of all races and all walks of life and blah, 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 blah. Black men killed by other black men in Chicago alone was about 360 in one city. Maybe, just maybe, worry more about black-on-black -black crime and let the general population at large worry about police crime. Not for nothing. If you really want to make a difference, there's your starting point. In this moment, what we need in elections is, is in many ways a defensive strategy to make sure that we get folks in office that aren't going to strip away every single right, every single access to opportunity that our people have fought for. For No one is stripping away your rights. No one is stripping away your opportunities. You just want to elect people that will give you more free shit. Fuck you.